A man standing on the wall throws a small ball vertically upwards with a velocity of 5.6 meters per second. The ball leaves his hand when it is at a height of 3.1 meters above the ground. So here you can see the diagram that he's standing on the wall. He throws the ball upwards in the air at this height. And the ball goes up and then eventually it comes back down. Assume that air resistance is negligible. Show that a ball reaches a maximum height above the ground of 4.7 meters. Now we have its velocity, right? With what velocity it is going to be moving. Uh, and that is 5.6 meters per second squared. We have the acceleration that would be acting on the ball. It's because it's moving vertically, the acceleration would be just the acceleration due to gravity. And we want to figure out the distance, the maximum distance that it is capable of rising in, under these circumstances. So we remember we have this Newton's equation of motion that states the difference of square of these v square minus u square is 2as. Now in this case, our velocity is just 5.6 meters. This v is 5.6 meters per second. What about u? Uh, sorry, this one is u, right? Because initially it's moving with 5.6 meters per second. So this is u, 5.6 meters per second squared, minus v is the final velocity. When a ball reaches its maximum height, after that its height will decrease. So that change in the gradient, basically height increasing and then height decreasing, it has to cross a zero. That's when its velocity at maximum height becomes a zero. So the final velocity would be zero squared. Next is 2 times a. a is the acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity acts where? It acts downwards, right? So it should be minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Because if upwards direction, as we have taken as plus 5.6, then whatever downward is has to have a negative signature with it. So this would be minus 9.8 into s, right? Now this minus sign can, because this is zero, this minus signs cancel with this one and you get, if you solve this for s, you get 4.7 meters. And that's what we want to show. Now, they say that the man does not catch the ball as it falls. And we can see that it would then fall below, cover this height of 3.1 meters to the ground. Calculate the time taken for the ball to fall from its maximum height to the ground. So what is the maximum height? S, 4.7 meters. We want to find the time, t, right? We know that in, we, have, we have acceleration in this uh, statement as well, which is acceleration due to gravity. So we know an equation that uh, will work and give us the time, right? Which is s equals to ut plus half a t squared. Now you can solve this equation for time. Uh, so we'll have s is equal to 1 by 2 into 9.81 into t squared which is just equal to 4.7 right because that's the height and then you solve this for t you get 2 times 4.7 and then you, you do the math you get 0 0.98 seconds Now the ball leaves the man hands at time t equals 0 and hits the ground at time t equals t. At t0 it is leaving the hand. So it is moving with some velocity at t0. Velocity is non-zero. It hits the ground at time t equals t. We know that the ball when it leaves it travels up. It travels with a positive velocity. And then when it goes back down it travels with a negative velocity. Right. So when it leaves the hand the velocity is some value. Right. Any non-zero value. Uh, we are required to sketch the graph to show the variation of velocity beyond the ball time t from t equals 0 to t equals t, uh, numerical values are not required. And we are to assume that v is positive in the upwards direction as already stated. So we know that initially there will be some speed. So let's say this is some non-zero speed. And then the speed, because it goes upwards, acceleration due to gravity is acting downwards on it that will decrease the speed so the speed will decrease but the acceleration is constant so it will decrease at a constant rate and then it will keep on decreasing but it will come become uh, let me uh, draw this line again so it will keep on decreasing 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 and at time t equals t it will again 
it will be some negative value of velocity right because at time t equals t is when it hits the ground right so it has to have a negative velocity because now the velocity when it hits the ground is downwards so it's a negative velocity so this is uh, what a line uh, would look like next state what is represented by the gradient of the graph in this thing well clearly we know that this the gradient is whatever is on y axis divided by whatever is on the horizontal axis so it is change in v by change in time we know what's that that's acceleration so it is the acceleration that is represented in this thing of the ball right so acceleration of the ball now the man throws a second ball with the same velocity and from the same height as the first ball the mass of the second ball is greater than that of the first ball so the second ball has a bigger mass assume air resistance is still negligible for the first and second balls compare the magnitudes of their acceleration now the acceleration is just due to gravity right and we know that this acceleration due to gravity is independent of the mass right because you know uh, the we have f is equal to mass times acceleration and the force of gravity is basically gmm by r squared and then you have equals to this using newton's second law m times a let's call it mg now for acceleration due to gravity the small mass m cancels out so the mass of the ball increasing the mass of the ball itself is not going to have any effect on the magnitudes of the acceleration so they remain the same next the speeds with which they hit the ground now if the acceleration of the ball is not changing it is still accelerating at the same rate and you gave it the same initial velocity both the balls you throw them with the same velocity right over here so if the acceleration is also not changing then there is nothing that would change right if acceleration is not changing then the it would the both the velocities of the ball will decrease at the same rate or increase at the same rate which means that the speeds would be equal so they would also remain the same 